تو ان مائی اوپینین پولیس از اے ویری امپورٹنٹ ڈپارٹمنٹ اینڈ از اے پبلک سروس ڈپارٹمنٹ سو اینی پبلک سروس ڈپارٹمنٹ ہیز ٹو ڈلیور سروسز ٹو دا پیپل اینڈ اٹ ہیز ٹو بی اے ویری پیپل سینٹرک آرگنائزیشن پیپل ایکسپیکٹیشنس دیٹ کیپس چینجنگ وتھ ٹائم اینڈ دا پولیس آلسو ہیز ٹو کیپ ایوالونگ اٹ سروسز ان دا سملر فیشن and we have got a very wide area to operate uh, especially if you see the crime scenario maintenance of law order has been usually almost in the same way the use of force or trying to have a dialogue with the people who are having the uh, dissatisfaction or those who are hesitating but in the field of crime there is a tectonic shift with the uh, cyber crimes coming into picture and more and more technology is being used uh, for committing the crime so my own uh, opinion is that uh, public uh, must get the best from the police as such and they deserve so karnataka is one of the best states in the country and people are extremely knowledgeable well educated uh, so my effort has been there to ensure that we remain focused on our on our public delivery as such now see for any organization there has to be a point where you deliver the services now for police the police station is the main public delivery point where our services are delivered to the common uh, man now there were supervisory officers are there but in my opinion if police stations function in the best possible manner definitely we can uh, provide all the we can fulfill the expectations of the people in terms of whatever registration of crime control over law order situation or various other social issues also where police plays an important role i feel that uh, it's very important that uh, there is a proper teamwork in the police department since everybody is important at the end of it 90% of my organization consists of the constables and head constables they should be very well trained they should understand the priority of the department and priority of the department is nothing but priority of the society as such since at the end of it we are supposed to be delivering you know what so, what society wants but the whole team has to be in tandem from the constable to the dgp they have to understand the same thing they have to speak the same language and they have to ensure that public is satisfied with the effort that we are putting so my lot of emphasis is there on the police stations uh, as such in terms of improving their efficiency in terms of ensuring that the people who come to the station they are well treated and uh, their grievances whatever i mean a few grievances may, we may be able to solve some of them we may not be able to solve but everybody must be heard properly they must be guided and uh, police is uh, perhaps the only organ of the uh, government which is so visible i mean police represents the government on the street as such since the policeman has got a uniform there is only one organization not only in karnataka all over the world where the uh, doors are never closed whether it is a festival whether it is a covid whether it is a earthquake and that building is always the police station perhaps you will not find any police station getting closed at any point of time when covid was there there were all organizations they had closed uh, there was uh, whatever um, people were indoors but the police station was always functioning i mean that remain the point of delivery on a different way at during those situations earthquake is there police is still working there is a drought police is working night 2 o'clock police is working afternoon put at 2 o'clock police is working so if we are able to make the police stations more efficient and if my constable head constables and the sub inspectors and inspectors who are there in the station if they really uh, appreciate the issues of the people and they are able to and they are at least they try to do their best in my opinion the our work will be our our target will be achieved so in this connection what i have done in the last uh, almost two and a half months uh, see supervision is very important i have given directions that every day uh, the sp of the districts and the deputy commissioners in the cities they must visit at least one station since we need to remain connected with the station since that that's the point where we are delivering our services 
whatever discussions we may be having, whatever policies we may be frame, framing, it is finally at the end of it is to ensure that the people get the benefit out of that. So, uh, if they are not otherwise busy in some meeting or something is there which is very important, but officers are required to visit the police stations on a daily basis, they are supposed to keep me informed of their visit. And when they go there, I have also directed them that they should all also speak to the constable at constable. Since generally uh, there is a tendency on the part of the officers to review the cases with the officers who are there in the police station. But uh, now uh, my uh, direction is that everybody must be spoken to. Since constable at constable also may have some information, they may have some uh, ideas also on various issues happening in that particular police station. So, that is happening all over the state, including Bangalore city and all the cities as such. Officers are visiting. Most of the officers are very well meaning officers. I think they are also trying to do their best. I want constable, head constables also to feel that uh, they are very important for the department. At the end of it, they are the people who are going to deliver whatever department is intending to. So, by this, I am just trying to ensure that the team becomes very coherent where from the top to bottom everybody is aligned in the same way. I have also been asking my officers to speak to the people who are there at the station. Whenever they go and it is all by surprise. So, when, when they go, they will find that some public is sitting there. They should ask them what exactly they are there for. Whether their ideas have been, their grievances have been heard or not, whether the action has been taken or not. Now, to further the point that every complaint in the police station is registered, and acted upon. Since this has been the desire of all the police forces all over the country and all police chiefs have been trying that the police stations must take all the complaints, register them, take action over them. But only issuing instructions is not sufficient since many times people may ignore the instructions. So, I came out with a new idea this time. and. Uh, uh, what I have asked my SPs and uh, deputy commissioners and range IGs and the additional commissioners in cities to send randomly decoys to the stations. Now, these decoys are our own policemen who are who, who are civil looking, wearing civil dresses. Even it can be a component also who has come to the deputy commissioner or to the SP. So, they will carry the complaint and they will go to the police station and uh, my uh, SP or DCP will be watching how the complaint is being treated. If he finds that either the complaint is not treated well or the registration of the case is not happening, it could be a petition which has to be taken into record. If it is not happening, then they are taking action against the earring officers. And that has brought sea change in the way the stations were functioning. Now, we did a uh, a statistical analysis in the last two and a half months, how much we have been able to succeed in this matter. You will be happy to know that in 80 percent cases, the police station staff has acted very well. They have given proper courtesies to the people who are coming to their station and uh, they have registered the complaint depending upon what type of complaint is that. Uh, only in 20 percent cases, we found that there were either slackness was there or uh, uh, there was a delay or there was a apathy on the part of the police officer. Action has been taken against those police officers who have not registered the cases properly. So, the message has gone loud and clear that there is no way anybody can evade giving proper hearing to the complainant and registering a case. And I am very happy that in next three, four months, I mean this 80 percent good uh, whatever uh, receipt is there or I mean our approach is positive towards the complainant. This will turn into 95 percent and in some time we should be able to achieve 100 percent wherein everybody who goes to the police station is heard properly and action is taken on the complainant of the person. So, this is the basic framework on which I was telling you that uh, you know uh, my emphasis is there that we should be able to improve the functioning of the police station. There has to be a surgeon centric policing. Now, of late, there has been a tremendous increase in the cyber crime cases. What has happened that, uh, uh, see, crime is uh, 
always risk analysis a criminal also does maybe in his own rudimentary way now in the cyber crime the risk is less as perceived by the person who is committing the crime he feels that the risk is less but point remains that in cyber crime also they leave the footprints and always i mean whether it is physical world or the cyber world police will always be able to find at the end of it whatever uh, evidences are left and we will track the but then people feel that cyber world is more anonymous you can commit crime and then it's faster your physical presence is not required so we have got sen stations which is for cyber crime narcotics and economic offenses in all the districts one station is there in city also all the zonal dcps they have got one station each but the numbers have been going very very high and then i realized that uh, people have to travel all the way to the one station in the district from various places and in city also in the similar way they have to come to the dcp's office to get the case registered so i have absolutely made it mandatorily that see at the end of it the convenience of the citizen is the most important thing now a person already has suffered a crime then he has to go to far away place to get his case registered so i have made it mandatorily that any person can approach nearest police station to get his case registered cyber crime cases so now sen stations are also registering the cyber crime cases and the regular stations are also registering the cyber crime cases so at the end of it is the, is the convenience of the public which is important and also the way the cyber crime cases are increasing i think a day has to come where in every police station has to have the capability and capacity to investigate those cases there could be a specialized cases which are very difficult that can be transferred to maybe one of the central stations but we are finding that 80% cases are simpler cases which can be investigated by any of the police officer who is there uh, in the station so that uh, is one uh, program which i find uh, is helpful to the people they did not go to the uh, cyber crime station or sen stations as such my also emphasis is there on the physical and mental health of the policeman since at the end of it you can deliver only when you are physically and mentally fit so i am asking my officers to ensure that we motivate everybody that uh, we is very important to remain mentally and physically fit police otherwise also i mean including your job also i mean is a stressful job you are getting into situations which are not very friendly situations at times investigating a crime at a very odd hour you are always looking for criminals and then situations which are uh, hesitations are going on people are search charged so you are trying to handle those situations so the my policeman has to be very very physically and mentally fit so that he is able to sustain that uh, stress level so my lot of emphasis is there on that uh, perspective also and i feel that uh, uh, leadership has to be by example you must ask people to do those things which you can do yourself so i am asking my officers also that i mean everybody has to be fit and they have to motivate others to remain fit and then uh, there are so many other areas where we are trying to uh, bring some fundamental uh, changes as such the society is changing the use of narcotics was very less earlier use of narcotics is quite high now the control of families over see at the end of it is the is the family where everybody learns the values values if family is not able to give a value system to the children then society will definitely suffer from uh, that point and then see police is a good deterrent but police also has got limited role to play now road rage after all uh, is risking the life the person is risking the life for the thrill so as far as possible we are definitely trying to ensure that the people are not allowed to do it and those who do they are caught and our constant endeavor is there many times uh, still they may be able to hoodwink the police and do it but then you will find that the things are pretty contained is uh, 
I mean, they may find a new road where they can do it. But next day, police will be there on that road to close that one. Then they will find another road. So, it's a constant process. It's a constant process and I am very much uh, happy that uh, Bangalore City Police or any of the district police, they have been rising to the occasion. And uh, the officers and the, all the ranks, they have been working very hard on this matter. Respect for elders. No, respect for elders. Family has to teach that value. See, we can always book a case against somebody who is misbehaving with the elder person, depending upon what type of misbehavior is that. But uh, you will always find that our response is very, very immediate and very, very positive. 112. I mean, uh, between 10 to 15 minutes, our one of the patrol vehicle is there at the scene of offense. So this constant battle between the crime and the police, it continues. Only thing is that we need more cooperation from the people to ensure that the police always keeps an edge over the criminals in terms of getting, giving the information to us, in terms of uh, ensuring that the people that they know, they don't indulge into crimes. So definitely, I mean, this is, this is a constant battle and uh, I am very sure that Karnataka police uh, is absolutely capable to win this battle. Sir, recently you have found two cases about drug use supplies. How uh, this can be tackled from your side? Because like now it has been supplied by someone else. Like it is operated mainly in remote area. Uh, See, human nature is designed in such a way that many things which look attractive are actually not good for the person. Now, criminals will come out with different ways to, uh, to, to, do, to further their whatever designs are there. And this chocolate, which is there, which has got a little bit of, uh, uh, I think, narcotics in that. So that is being sold and police is on this job. So they will keep coming with new ideas. We will keep stopping and taking action on that. So in all such cases, uh, the police is seizing the material and the cases are being booked under the NDPS Act, which is quite a powerful uh, deterrent for uh, the, as such, those people. If anybody feels that he can commit a crime and he can get away with, that doesn't happen. There could be a little lag in catching the person. But finally, the law will uh, catch up with the criminal. See, there has been an explosion on uh, social media front in the sense that the number of people who are using social media is quite uh, huge. And... Uh, Many times, see, till it is being used for right purposes, there is no problem. The problem starts when malicious information starts flowing on that. Manipulated information is being put on that. Fake information is being put on that. So, we are also catching up. We are also ensuring that uh, uh, we are able to take care of this finance. Now, at the state level, after I have come, we have started uh, state level monitoring cells at... Uh, uh, state intelligence at the CID, uh, state uh, CID headquarters, Bangalore city. And then now we have made each and every district and each and every DCP office has got a social media monitoring cell. They are monitoring all the social media in their areas. Actually, we have gone a step further. Now, last 15 days back, we started creation of social media cells in each of the police stations in the state. In next one month, each station will have the capability to monitor the social media uh, in their area. So we are also, we are keeping pace with the time. Absolutely. I mean, there is no way that people can find any platform to commit crime and we will not be upgrading ourselves to take care of that. So See, like Instagram, like Facebook. So they will be keep, I mean, you can call it as cyber patrol. 
so they are looking into what exactly is happening in the what's going viral what type of information is flowing and many times when we find that some information is there which is malicious or which is a criminal content we immediately take action we trust the person who is doing this catch him we book the cases so many cases we have booked for uh, putting the malicious information on to the uh, um, uh, on um, this uh, on the cyber world or the social media platforms so all the platforms we are monitoring so you can imagine i have got more than 1000 police stations in the state more than uh, 31 districts then the deputy commissioners are there so everywhere now social media cells are getting established similar thing is done in other states also something like this because we are taxed see uh, the point is that karnataka is the most progressive state in the whole country so karnataka state is progressive see a state consists of what the people and the setup which is there so karnataka police is also one of the most uh, progressive police forces in the country and in my opinion perhaps taking social media monitoring to police stations in a very very structured fashion this is perhaps first in the country since you need so much of technology also the people who are doing this work they also have to be technology savvy and uh, the whole chain of command has to be sensitive to this particular uh, matter so i think uh, we may be one of the most aggressive i cannot say that we are the only one since there could be others also who are doing and everybody must be doing uh, in my opinion every police force wants to keep itself abreast with the time but we must be one of the most aggressive police forces towards monitoring of the uh social media content as such uh absolutely i mean see you can be very sure that karnataka police as such has got zero tolerance for any type of corruption not only monetarily any type of corruption as such we are ruthless in not only containing crime in the society but also containing crime corruption is a crime basically within the system we will not spare any person who is indulging into corruption as such now we are trying that those areas where corruption can be very easily you know it can be it can flourish those areas are cut you will find that earlier that towing vehicles used to be there you don't find them now since there were a lot of allegations on that particular thing you will also find that uh, the frequency of police officers checking vehicle records it has come down drastically we have put in a system where only after a uh, assistant commissioner of police or deputy commissioner of police on his direction only the checking of the vehicles can be done so there is a proper supervision over that particular thing in all the police stations in the state we have got now cctv cameras located inside the police station so everything is being recorded whatever is happening in the police station and if any allegations are there or any doubt is there we can immediately check the cctv feed which is there and uh, body worn uh, these cameras have been brought in we already have got more than 6000 uh, cameras uh, given to the more those people who are absolutely in the field and we will keep increasing the number of body worn cameras so we will keep bringing in various ways to ensure that the corruption is weeded out from the department and we will take very harsh action as you said uh, this uh, kerala case absolutely i mean we are also shocked we are also we are terribly shocked on this particular incident the we are extremely feeling bad the way the things have happened the officers have been suspended already and a department of inquiry has been ordered against them and once the inquiry is over we will take uh, harsh measures on this particular point india yeah, yeah, we keep meeting frequently last was to revise when i had written <laughs> see everything what happens see pb is uh, i mean i am the chairman for the pb and other uh, officers are there 
uh, additional DGs, four of them. So we keep meeting, these are all in camera meetings. So, I mean, uh, and these are regular meetings of the department. So everything, I mean, is, is, is running well. There is no problem in that. See, I will tell you, world over, in India and in Karnataka, the bodily crimes are coming down. That means where uh, the physical violence is there, those crimes are on reduction. Now, Bangalore city itself, I was joint police commissioner crime for Bangalore city in 2003 and four. We used to have in a month about uh, 220 murders around that. Now it is reduced to uh, 170, 160. So the violent crimes are coming down, but, and that's world over. See, once people are becoming more educated, people are becoming more savvy, the physical violence is coming down, but other types of crimes, which are the white color crimes, they are on the increase, fraud, cheating, cyber crimes, they are on the rise. Since again, I mean, cheating can be done only by a person who is little educated. So there is a reversal, I mean, there is a downtrend in uh, physical uh, violence, uptrend in the white collar crimes as such. So we are also gearing up for that. We are having more and more sand stations which are there, basically there for earlier there used to be no sand stations, now we have got sand stations in each district. We are strengthening our economic offenses wing everywhere. A lot of training is happening on that one. So the crime pattern is changing and then the policing skills are also trying to be shifted depending upon the requirements of the day. See, a staff crunch is something, even your organization also will say that if we had two more people, it would have been still better. <laughs> so, see, that's, everybody wants more people. See, the work is there and uh, work is so much everywhere that any number of staff, you can never say that we have reached the saturation level since you are expanding also. No? See, when you are having X number of people you are covering, why events? You increase by five, you also increase your coverage. Similarly, police also, the areas that we are covering is also, now we have brought 112, highway patrols are there, so which was not there earlier. So, so many vehicles are required, so many drivers are required, so many policemen are required. So, we are also expanding our service areas, but it's fine. I think we are, we are quite fine so far as the strength is concerned. No, I think, uh, yeah, so, no, it's all right. I mean, see, the it was very unfortunate, whatever happened. I mean, it should not have happened, this uh, scam as such. But now the matter is before the uh, Honorable High Court of Karnataka. So once they take a decision on that, I think we will be able to go ahead on this matter. I think the courts are also aware of our difficulties. Courts have been apprised of our difficulties. And we are very sure that uh, a suitable order will definitely come, which will, which would be able to help the department as such. See, the society as such, as it operates, police is only a subset of that. The various dynamics which bring these type of feelings, they are beyond the police control. But we just ensure that any person who is trying to instigate on these lines, we are able to contain those, those, uh, in, those misinformation or those type of wrong things well in time. 
so we remain always very very alert on some of these issues which includes the communal uh, disharmony some people may be out of mischief they will try to do it see in general the equilibrium state of society is peace disturbance is always a non equilibrium so society will come back to the equilibrium that's the way the system works uh, i mean that's how the human survive otherwise if the disturbance was the norm then perhaps the society would have vanished by this time so we are quite capable of taking uh, preemptive uh, measures for that and that's how you find that i mean policing in karnataka remains pretty uh, strong or different see we are always constantly we are looking for feedback from the people now qr code method is a feedback mechanism see every service has to be measured for its satisfaction since finally at the end of it the people need to feel that yes the service was good so qr code method is one of the mechanism that we are adopting to get the feedback from the people so that we can improve upon if uh, people say that somebody in particular place did not they are they don't feel satisfied we can look into the matter at the end of it the satisfaction of the people who come to the police station is very very important to us we exist for society only we exist for the people so we have to ensure that people must feel satisfied it's a good measure and is going on it will be a continuous process see it will be a continuous process if you take at the state level i mean every day we need to know whether our people have worked properly or not so it will be a continuous process then in addition we are also having the uh, the uh, measures where in the people in some of the places that being experimented those complainants who are coming to the station uh, our officers will uh, randomly uh, they will give a ring to the number the person who has come to a station and ask about his uh, opinion on the police service as such so we need to also constantly check ourselves whether we are doing well or not no no i don't think it's like that uh, see the point is there that we have got 5000 plus traffic police officers in the uh, in bangalore city it is one of the largest traffic uh, uh, organization in the whole country among the various cities which are there the number of traffic police in bangalore is much more than many other cities so you can understand how much importance government is giving to the traffic as such how much important the department is giving to the traffic as such and we are also realizing that uh, i mean uh, traffic scenario in bangalore needs constant uh, you know um, um, uh, constantly we have to keep adopting methods which can keep it flowing properly so in that way only even uh, i mean the policeman whether traffic or law and order the purpose is same that the society must keep moving in the right way there are so many areas where see beat patrols in any case the beat patrols have to be done every time and the beat patrols where they will be done they will be done on the road only so you can say the beat patrol is helping the traffic police when there is a vehicle parked in a no parking area whether it is a traffic police or law and order police anybody who sees that there is a vehicle parked in a, a no parking area he has to take action on that one so we have asked that everybody will be involved in policing and traffic management is one of the important areas on this matter and i have also asked that the police visibility is very very important especially during the peak hours so between uh, say 8:30 9 to 11 and in the evening 6 to 9 not only the people are out on the roads the criminals are also out on the roads since at the time when they can also i mean uh Uh, naturally, I mean, so, so the the people are the source uh, at the end of it. So now my police f- 
فورس از آلسو آؤٹ آن دا روڈ ایپس ٹوٹلی آل دا پولیس اسٹیشن ان دا مارننگ اینڈ ان دا ایوننگ دے ول بی آؤٹ آن دا روڈ تو دا کرمنلس ول نو دیٹ ایف دے ڈو سم تھنگ دے ول بی کاٹ سو سی ایوری بڈی ہیز گاٹ اے رائٹ ٹو ہیو اے پیسفل لائف سو ٹل اے کرمنل ڈزن انڈلج ان ٹو اے کرمنل ایکٹیویٹی از فائن فار ایس سو وی ہیو آلسو ٹیکن میجرس اینڈ آئی کین ڈیفینیٹلی ٹیل یو دا والیوم آف ویکیز وچ وی ہیو گاٹ آن بینگلور سٹی از پریٹی ہیوز روڈس آر لمیٹیڈ وڈس یو کانٹ میک ان لمیٹیڈ وڈس آف روڈس دیر آر ادر اکنامک آف ایکٹیویٹیز وچ آر ہیپننگ آن دا سو آور ایفرٹ ہیز بین دیئر ٹو انشیور دیٹ ٹرافک ریمینس اسٹریم لائن اینڈ بائی اینڈ لارج ٹرافک ان بینگلور سٹی کیپس موونگ ناؤ اٹ از اینڈ آئی تھنک ٹوینٹی ٹو ٹوینٹی فائیو پرسینٹ امپروومنٹ از دیئر ان دا فلو آف ٹرافک ارلیئر دیر یوز ٹو بی بگ جیمس ناؤ دیٹ ہیز ریڈیوسڈ ٹرافک مے بی موونگ سلو ڈو ٹو دا ویری فیکٹ دیٹ روڈ از ناٹ دیٹ مچ وائڈ وی آر انشورنگ دیٹ آل دیز رانگ پارکنگس وچ آر دیئر اور بگر بسز اسٹاپنگ آن دا ان دا مڈل آف دا روڈ آل دو تھنگس آر ٹوٹلی اسٹاپ دیر آر سم بس اسٹاپیجز وچ آر اسپیشلی آن سل ووڈ سائڈ اینڈ آل دیٹ وچ آر ایبسوٹلی ایٹ اے رانگ پلیس وی آر دے شوڈ ناٹ بی اسٹاپنگس ان دیٹ دیٹ پریونس دا ٹرافک فرام اے اسموتھ فلو سو وی آر وی آر وی آر چینجنگ دیم سم فائیو ہنڈریڈ میٹر وی آر سیفٹنگ دیم اوے سو دیٹ دا ٹرافک موووس اسموتھلی اینڈ وی آر برنگنگ لاٹ آف ٹیکنالوجی یو ول بی یو جسٹ آئی ول کمپلیٹ یو ول بی ہیپی ٹو نو دیٹ از میسور بینگلور ہائی وے ویئر ایوری منتھ وی یوز ٹو ہیو ٹوینٹی ٹوینٹی فائیو ڈیٹس اٹ ہیز کم ڈاؤن ٹو سیون ایٹ کیسز اینڈ ناؤ وی آر پوٹنگ سیم ٹیکنالوجی وچ وی آر یوزنگ ان and in you will find in next 6 months time uh, uh, perhaps uh, the accident cases will further come down no what happens that uh, uh, when varieties of uh, vehicles are uh, uh, driving people many times are not wearing the helmet scooters and uh, two wheelers they should not be on the highway like this since one small touch also the person is gone so all those measures we have also taken up the matter with the national highway authority they are also putting effort in ensuring that if there is a technical uh, issue somewhere that is also taken care of and we are bringing lot of uh, cautionary signs educative my always aim is that uh, if uh, please come if uh, people must be first informed about uh, now speed limits are going to be visible everywhere i mean uh, pe- people may not know what is the speed limit in those highways so they are doing all that work another 6 months time you will find that the first lane is for 100 km second lane is for 80 km third lane is for uh, 60 km you will find uh, that uh, we are putting uh, those devices which will indicate uh, what is the speed of your vehicle which you will find in many of the foreign countries so as you will pass the board will display that your speed is so much and if it goes beyond uh, the permissible limit it will turn red so you know that you are over speeding you will come down the first thing is to educate and then we are going to have same automatic uh, uh, booking of cases uh, through the cameras so if uh, the person has not reduce his speed then at some point of time he will be caught not physically electronically and when he reaches towards the end of the highway he will be given the slip i will tell you uh, what happens that police after detecting the case it has to be proven in the court of law so we have to collect all the evidences and those ex- evidences have to be examined now the technology has taken a leap so if a criminal has been to a spot and if we are able to get his one hair also we can connect the criminal to the crime through the dna analysis so all these things are extremely useful and our uh, 
ایف ایس ایل از ون آف دا بیسٹ ایف ایس ایلس ان دا ہول کنٹری ناؤ آئی تھنک ان دا لاسٹ فیو ایئرس لاٹ آف اکوپمنٹس ہیو بین پرچیز لاٹ آف نیو اسٹاف ہیو بین ٹیکن ناؤ وی ہیو گاٹ ایف ایس ایل وینس وچ آر بینگ سینڈ ٹو دا سین آف آفینس سنس ان مینی کیسز دا کلیکشن آف ایویڈنس آلسو نیڈس ویری اسپیشلائزڈ ایفرٹ سو وی ہیو گاٹ سوکو آفیسرس سائنٹیفک دیٹ دوز ہو گو ٹو دا I mean, a spot to collect the evidences. And now I have made it mandatory that in all the important cases, the, f- the forensic man must go so that we are able to collect as much evidence as possible. And we are able to prove the case in the court of law. And scientific evidence is beyond doubt. Nobody can, I mean, somebody can perhaps go back from his words. But if a scientific evidence is there, then that cannot be disputed. So a lot of uh, changes we have taken in uh, FSL. See, I think it will depend upon case to case and it will depend upon the type of crime which has taken place. Now suppose if a, if a person has murdered somebody, he can't be approver. I mean, he is approver for what? So if there is a group of people who are committing offense, depending upon how severity is the offense. So I think it has to be done case to case. We have to look into that matter. See, we are committed to safety of women and children, old people. We are proactively pursuing this. See, 112 is always there. Anybody can dial from their phone 112 and 112 will locate your where you are and immediately the police uh, patrol will be there to help. In addition, we have put in Bangalore city, these safety islands are there, wherein if you press that uh, button, immediately control room will get activated. The cameras are there. So it will start showing the scene of, I mean, whatever is happening in that place. And uh, immediate response will be there from the police side as such. See, it's, a, it's again a constant battle. We keep doing uh, searches of the prisons. We keep uh, booking cases against the uh, prisoners who are indulging into these type of activities. We also book cases against the prison officers who are supporting such activities. So it's a constant battle. But I can always tell you that at the end of it, the system will always win. Since system has got so much of power and resources. So once in a while, some abrasion takes place. But in general, it is ensured that the things remain as per the rules. Things are, uh, I mean, kept under control. It is under investigation by the SIT. So SIT will investigate the case and depending upon evidences and whatever proofs are there, it will take action on that. See, every organization has to take care of its people. Then only the organization can survive. And in the organization, 90% people are in the rank of constable, head constable, assistant sub-inspector, sub-inspector. Police duty is definitely a tough, it's a, it's, it's a tough job. I mean, uh, here physically and mentally both is demanding. We also remain committed to the welfare of our people. You must be knowing that every year we carry out a medical examination. Government pays money for that. Uh, medical examination of the uh, each police officer from all ranks, from constable to SP, everybody, including their, no, the state will take only responsibility for the, the police officer. And depending upon their health status, if somebody is having some issues, they are further given the health, uh, whatever uh, treatment which is required. Then uh, 
ڈیورنگ دا پیریڈس ایوری ویکلی پیریڈ دا ایس پیز اینڈ دین دا آفیسر ہو آر ان چارج آف دا پلیسز دے لک ان ٹو دا گریوانسز آف اوور پیپل ایف سم بڈی ہیز گاٹ سم ایشوز اباؤٹ اینی تھنگ سو دے آر ٹاکڈ اپون سو دا دا پروسیس از دے از دیئر دیٹ اٹس 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 لائک اے فیملی آئی مین اٹس 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 اے لارج فیملی سی ایوری ٹیم از اے فیملی آئی مین آل آف یو آر آلسو لائک اے فیملی ہیئر سو اٹس وی آر آلسو لائک اے فیملی آور جاب از ٹف دیٹس آل آئی مین بٹ وی ڈیفینیٹلی انشیور دیٹ ایوری بڈی از ٹیکن کیئر آف پیپل آر گیون لیو پیپل آر گیون ویکلی آف بٹ کنسٹینس آر دیئر سم ٹائم وین دیر از اے ویری سیریس لانڈر سچویشن وی مے ناٹ بی الاؤنگ پیپل ٹو گو ایٹ دیٹ ٹائم But in general, during normal time, people are able to avail uh, whatever leave is required. See, I tell you, the crime in society is like the virus and the bacteria which is around you. They are always there. You have to ensure that your immune system is robust. robust. So, policing is also like that. we cannot do away with those elements who are interested in creating problem but we can always keep our intelligence system now social media monitoring we have started in a very strong way so to develop your or to strengthen your humanity you also take so many measures many times you will eat turmeric many times you will eat some <laughs> kadha so <laughs> you will do yoga so the we also keep doing like that but we ensure that at any point of time nothing is allowed to happen and by chance also if something happens see you can't say that you will never get cold you can get but your effort is there to keep it to the minimum duration so i mean uh, if a disturbance happens also we immediately contain that suppose if a issue happens now in your body what happens wcs will run here police force will run to their spot <laughs> so we will contain that some collateral damage will be there but that's fine no you mean that uh, which is the biggest challenge for the, our department see we have got multiple fronts since the uh, the type of work that police does see maintenance of law and order that is one of the, our most important job the peace must prevail the communities may have differences groups may have differences but they must live in peace they must uh, ensure that their differences are sorted out through dialogue then crime must be contained there are always criminals who are professional criminals their profession itself is to commit crime as you live on doing whatever you are doing i live on doing my policing there are some people who are living on crime itself so our job is to contain those people so crime is another area then in society crime also keeps manifesting in different ways cyber crimes are going up so we also bring technology we also have got the permission from the government to get experts to take care of that so i cannot say that we have got only one front we have got multiple fronts and our see society is dynamic the social forces are changing their interactions are also changing so we also remain and make in our approach so you always wanted to be an ipo professor what made you i think god has uh, um, has 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 ensured that i remain in uh, come to this service i mean otherwise we are all there to to uh, our own destiny brings wherever we are but i love i i love this work what we do is very challenging and it needs a lot of attention on your you know mental faculty you have to keep devising new ways to tackle the situation i don't get much time to watch uh, all these things so we do i mean at times we do watch but then the point is we know what exactly is the <laughs> reality so whatever is being projected many times is the dramatized version of of crime so i mean well that's also creative only i mean i can't say that it's not creative there are so many 
which one ye yeah, correct hai ye yeah, i think so yeah, and is rightly so i mean see everybody wants a protector khaki is the one who protects at the end of it <laughs> you, <laughs> you know autoimmune disease you know <laughs> at times it can happen like that but then system will take care of that the system will take care of It's possible, but in society, you know, I mean, see, content is there. Knife is available to everybody. Anybody can purchase the knife. But people have to use their discretion. They have to understand what's the outcome of this. I mean, human mind is such that, see, whatever is happening is all due to the mind only. Somebody wants to eliminate his opponent. somebody wants to buy peace with the opponent now it depends upon the thought process and uh, for everything there is a consequences so, so in my opinion people are wise enough to know what is the consequences they may watch but they will not uh, indulge into they will not indulge into those things so you must watch the kora series <laughs> okay all my rights go Yes, yeah, see, after all, everybody is a human being. I mean, at the end of it, society is responsible for everybody, and we also take. Uh, I mean, whatever government stand is there, furthering that. Uh, I mean, there has to be social. Uh, everybody is part of society, whichever gender he is. Uh, No, 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 no. No, it is much less. It is much less now. We don't zero tolerance for any criminal activity, including moral policing. We have got zero tolerance. We will not allow. We will not tolerate. And those who want to get into this, they will suffer consequences. We are very clear on that. See, the point is that every organization is dynamic. many organizations and everybody knows consequences and uh, i mean i don't know whether organization per se or the individuals are responsible for these things but we have got zero tolerance for this i think there are no interferences still inspector is being posted at inspector's place and all of them are there is no inspector who is having a uh, tainted uh, record will ever get posted to any good uh, positions and there is absolutely pb decides all the whatever transfer details are there uh, i think madam i mean this could be true for a very small number of cases but uh, as i told you we have started this decoy system since we also wanted to understand how the stations are working on the complaints and as i told you in the beginning itself 80% cases are being registered without any problem 20% there were issues my officers they have taken action against those who are responsible and definitely my department also knows too well at the station level that the cost of not registering a complaint is very high under the rule they have to take up the complaint and they have to investigate if complaint is not correct they can always close the complaint but complaint has to be taken so as i told you that in the beginning itself it is 80% are being registered only 20% cases we found where the registration was that is slack it will further increase to 90% 95% where the and at the end of it 100% cases will be registered so what happens that you know 
hundred cases where policeman has acted well will not be a news. But one case where he has not acted properly will be a news. So what happens that one case becomes highlighted, then people make a perception that police department is like this. So I will request you people also to project, uh, you know, where we work well. See, society is, you are able to go to your home, come back from your home to office, you are able to go to shopping, you are able to go to film. You never had any problem. I mean, out of all the people who are sitting here, I can ask you whether you faced any, any criminal activity in Bangalore. No, none of you. You may be. Police came immediately. So, but police came immediately. You are happy with the, isn't it? So, number one, no, it's not surprise. There's a norm. See, you. I didn't expect that speed. I thought they can be. No, no. See, that's what I am telling. That media has got a very strong role. Perceptions are made by media. You are from media. You thought that it will come late, but it came immediately. Correct. Now, it's your responsibility to change the perception of the society about police. See, we are how many people? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Out of 13, one person faced a crime. That means you are out of 13, one person means how many? We will include him also. So, <laughs> it is 14. Eh? One person means the point. Eight percent. Only. That means 82% were safe due to the brisk police patrolling which is going on. That also 8% got immediate police response. So should you not applaud for the police? Yes, <laughs> so you have got a good police in uh, Karnataka. Karnataka police is undoubtedly a Kindly write also, na? <laughs> you only say, but see media is the mirror of the society. Whatever you write, people feel this is the way society runs. In my opinion, your protector, that is the police, if you always condemn him, see one person must have done a wrong thing. I mean, it's possible where I have got more than one lakh people. One person can go astray. I mean, it's very much part of the human nature. But whether the whole police force can be blamed for that? No. Our values are not that. Our values is also to ensure that integrity is maintained. Police officers, they behave very properly with the people. They are harsh with the criminals. But yes, one person can go astray here and there. So you have to ensure that you project the police in the right. Don't spare the wrong ones also. He will also not spare. But what about the right ones? That's fine. I mean, see, it's, no, no, not at all. Absolutely, there is no problem. See, more officers, better policing. And uh, I'm happy officers are there and they are doing good job. No, see, again, it's very important. But a sample size, you have spoken to only two people. No, out I'm of 200. <laughs> no, but see, everybody wants to work in day shift. Nobody wants to work in night shift. Correct. But people have to work. No? The system to has to home. has to run. <laughs>
and no harm in letting the world also know that your uh, thoughts are so and so. In my opinion, I mean the technology, the mobility, the when when we had joint service, uh, that time each station used to have only nine constable head constables. Now in place of nine, there are 40, 45 people are there. Even the inspectors used to go on the motorcycle. On the motorcycle now, jeeps are there in every of the station. Wireless sets were limited. Now wireless sets are there. Technology has changed. I think the society as such and police also. I mean now the numbers are also huge. We have taken over so many new areas. Perhaps there were no highway patrolling earlier. The crimes have been also changing. The bodily crimes are much less. And your economic offenses are increasing. See, what is happening that Beach Patrol also has got the motorcycles nowadays. So, they are doing foot and mobile patrol. But you can be very sure that uh, patrolling is happening. That is why when you go back your home, everything is fine. Correct? When you walk on the road in the night, you may not see the policeman in front of your eyes. But he is around you. See, visibility is not... Otherwise, you will be robbed. No? Like, see, you are keeping trace of police. The criminal is also keeping trace of the police. Every day, there is one deputy commissioner of police who is supervising the night rounds. Everywhere, we have got... And now we have brought the e-beat wherein my DCPs can check each and every constable where he is doing the, not only DCPs, the inspectors can check where they are, his people are doing patrolling. The DCPs can check inspectors where they are doing patrolling. So, absolutely. And we are very much serious about that. There is a night beat as well as there is a day beat also, since daytime also pickpocketing and all this uh, suitcase lifting and so many other crimes are taking place, I mean, can take place. So, daytime also, you have got policemen all around. I am happy that policeman is not visible to you, but he is able to protect you. 